so we're here to talk about the your short film burnout um and before we jump into the film i actually want to talk a little bit about genre uh for a second because it's so interesting that this is a very particular type of horror uh comedy kind of film and you know a horror comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes and so just to start off for fun I want to get your guys' uh, perspectives and opinions on horror films. What horror films do you speak out or do you seek out that speak to you? Uh, if you could possibly believe it, the filmmaker David Cronenberg is is a fave of mine. Um, <laughs> at, 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 after seeing this particular short, um, I, I mean, I love horror in all shapes and sizes. I think it is... Um, over the last 50 years and also like really now um i, I just saw this new movie last night called long legs um it, oh it's, you've seen long legs i really want to see that one so bad <laughs> it's real. it's there's something really exciting happening with uh i think being excited about film uh, that is in some form of the horror genre considering how elastic that genre is it can really take on a lot of different forms and it's very, um, for lack of a better word, it's very like cinema forward. It's very much just like, how can you use every tool in the medium to like create a very specific reaction? And I think that in Burnout, um, in many ways, it was about like over the shortest period of time that we have, like how can we create a very visceral specific reaction that ties into like a an idea um, about like you know what what it is like to work today what it is like to overwork today that uh everyone making the movie could relate to that makes sense everett what are your thoughts on uh the horror genre i mean i i agree completely i mean just working with russell goldman has been absolutely phenomenal because i like to say the journey is like stepped into the the unimaginable you know what i'm saying and I think that's the beautiful part about, you know, horror films as well. Like, I love Jordan Peele. I love the classic, like, Halloween. You know, I just love, I just love where it's going and how it's developing and how, it, you know, it, it, it can pick certain ideas or topics and then visually and viscerally connect you to it through cinema um, and community next to you and take you on a wild ride to just explore the what-ifs or the deep thoughts we all have or feel, you know what I'm saying, and bring to life these things. You know, you know, use it as a, as a conversational piece too. So I love the genre, and um, yeah, I'm excited about what we got going. That's excellent, Russell. Let's go ahead and talk about the film. Can you give a uh, a synopsis on what this short film is about? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the it is it is about a um an assistant at a sports management company, an assistant at a sports management company. Um, who is willing to push himself to whatever it takes to get a presentation in front of his boss that he very much cares about. Um, and this includes setting himself on fire. Um, and my favorite part about that log line is that I, I've been told just this week because it started, uh, it the world premiere is tonight. It started, I think, screening early at Chattanooga Film Fest, which, which is simultaneous is that the, the uh, resounding feedback from that festival has been, they were expecting the movie to be crazy based off of that log line. And then it gets a lot crazier once the log line completes, like it, there's, there's more story um, yeah. and there's more of a, uh, a, a very psychological uh, relationship uh, between uh, this boss Gower and then uh, Everett's character Virgil and it it there's a lot um there's a there there are many things that, Vir, that Virgil you know like really idolizes and respects about Gower it's like there is a supernatural drive not just to like succeed in the workplace but like to really be seen by this person um and in in many cases it it it, it just it pushes into the absurd and I think that what makes it this movie for me like it is, it is horror comedy, but I feel like we really were just like, let's just push the horror to a place where like it just authentically makes us laugh because it it is so wild. Um, and that's my favorite kind of horror comedy. It's 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 very much like it it is just how how wild and awful can you go? <laughs> and it and it goes there. Absolutely. Um 
I I was so curious. So the title Burnout, you know, you talk about the log line and the expectations that kind of sets, but you know, I get to the end of the of the short film and I just realize this parallel in in the title Burnout uh, between both literally and figuratively being burnt out from work. Um, it makes me wonder, and I always wonder this with projects, does did the title come first and then the and then the story, or did the story come first and the title is just a natural product of that? a great question i it had always been referred to as burnout in my head i some variation of it had been uh, with me for a while and i think it often had an element of fire in the workplace and, and that manifested into um a virgil like basically like dunking his head uh in his like flame engulfed computer um, but weirdly, I, I ended up spacing out like burn and out, I think ended up taking on e like their own single phrases. Um, and I wonder if that was to create it, like the the variations of how you can actually you can uh, it's it's literal, it's figured it's figurative. It's um, there's something about, I think, where the end of the short goes of like it's it's beyond exhaustion it's like Virgil's self is kind of like being burnt within him um mm -hmm. which is a really scary idea and something we talked about a lot of like um a a spoiler like a very bleak note to end a story like this on but like it is it's burnout is corrosive as you said in every way mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it was the space in the title that really got me thinking about that parallel because you could have made it one word and that would have made a lot of sense to the figurative burnout from work. Um, but when you made it two words, it's like, oh, there's actually something burning in this. <laughs> and that burnout is is very literal. Um, so Everett, what what were your first thoughts when you read this script? I want your very your first impressions when you read this. Like how how did this come off to you and what attracted you to the project? Well, what attracted me was I met with Jamie Ember, cast director, wonderful lady. Um, and, you know, she was just like, hey, you know, what do you want to do? And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm just in a space where I want to dive into the unknown from a creative space, you know, whether it be a supernatural world. That's just where I wanted to be. And she, oh, I have the perfect person for you to meet. And me and Raj just met around here in L.A. and we had lunch and um you know, we hit it off, but actually I skipped a step. So she sent me the script before I met Russ. And when I read, I blazed through it and I was like, what the hell is this? And when I, when I, when, once I saw that, I'm like, yo, this is something I haven't seen nor felt. And I think in life, we look for that. Like through our day to day, we look for the unknown because that's where life energy is. That's what excites us about waking up. We don't know what to expect, right? So. I think just seeing that I haven't seen this before, there was no point of reference for me. And it was just, I was so inspired by whoever created this, whoever had these thoughts to create such an original piece of just, I don't know, insanity that I didn't know how it was gonna work, but I'm like, whoever this is, I those are the true leaders of the generation um, that deserve to uh, you know have a voice and I wanna be a part of that. So that's how that happened truly met Russ and then we connected and you know and um two different worlds collided and I was like man I'm all in let's uh, create the unimaginable you know what I'm saying and that's how the journey happened man that's a really great way of putting it because this is there are so many interesting ideas happening in here and and you know like Russell's saying there's this uh, this component of absurdity to it but also you know there, there's something real about this as well um, yeah you gotta you gotta be bold you gotta be bold to be real you know yeah. you gotta be bold in these times not bold in a forceful way but bold in just a true authentic way i think that alone is anarchy in this type of climate <laughs> so yeah absolutely um everett you are you're no um stranger to sports and film you uh played nat clifton in the uh film sweetwater uh and um brought your 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 sports background to that role um i am curious did you also have office background to bring to this role yeah i had i had a little bit of office background i definitely did have a little bit of office background um i've, I've lived multiple lives <laughs> <laughs> you know but the but it was interesting you know i look at the assistant role as like a, a underdog role in a way of trying to fight and yearn and get to a position 
So I really related to just being that underdog and wanted to prove yourself worthy of whatever it is you felt like position you should be in, you know? Um, so Virgil was that, that, that office worker, that assistant or whatever you want to call him that has some burning desire to prove his, that he should, that he belong. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I definitely relate to that. I think a lot of people can relate with that. I think that there's a lot about work culture that kind of speaks to that. And, you know, it, it may not get to that level of toxicity, but there, there is always that, that competition or that like drive within yourself to want to be better. And I think a lot of people uh, relate with that. And this is something that, uh, that can appeal to a lot of people. Um, I'm watching the film and it, it's, interesting the things that happen in the film and it makes me think about the on-set experience you know a computer bursting out into flames and you know prosthetics ears stuff going on um tell me about uh so give me some on-set stories what uh what happened on set how was the the experience of filming this movie it it was i think for something like this we knew that we had to put uh you know, there there are L we we set a computer on fire. We set a uh, a a silicon double of Everett that we molded and built uh, in the weeks leading up to the shoot. We set that on fire as well. Um, we did all of this in a commercial uh, workspace in the heart of Los Angeles, which uh, typically does not allow open flame of any sort, uh, even. Uh, they, they they measure the size of candles you can have in your office. So uh, to say it took some um, creative solutions would, would, would be a bit of an understatement. Um, we had uh, an incredible pyrotechnics team um, that had a relationship with the Los Angeles Fire Department and very much just modulated exactly how we could pull something like this off safely um, and recourses um, in case the fire got on anything besides just the laptop um because even with the laptop it was three courses of okay um let's make sure that this is the laptop we need to take the battery out of so that it doesn't uh suddenly you know melt acid acid in front of an entire crew's face there were a few more like things that you might not see on a normal film set that that we were considering but uh i was working with such a wonderful and creative group of people that that felt so committed to making the version of this that feels like real life like transpire in front of camera um and and, and ever it was uh it just incredibly game for i i there were there was a shot ever or there was a take where you just kept leaning further and further into the computer beyond the mark that i think we had like even like said like okay i think that i might be able to cut further here but i think that everett as an actor is very conscientious of like like if i keep going like i know what the shot is going to look like on the other side or i have an inkling and um he was right it looked better um because there is a shot where he actually goes all the way towards a computer in flame and there are certain elements of of VFX touch-ups in the movie, that is not one of them. That is like actually actually his face very close to fire. Um, and, uh, but the unique thing about, and we found this with the laptop is that um, even if when the screen was on flame, uh, you could still type on the keyboard and uh, the heat did not carry over. So there were certain benefits to uh, the decision to make this a laptop, not that that was the intent, uh, in mm -hmm. the first place, but, um, it was a real, it was, it was my favorite shoot I've ever been on. It was, um, it, it, it was the, the last day was an overnight, um, at, at a, at a football field, a high school football field. Mm -hmm. And it was a mixture of capturing these flashbacks with Everett, but also, um, I have to shout out Tommy Earl Jenkins, uh, as Gower, um, an incredible maniacal performance. Um, there were these uh, dance sequences that we were shooting on this football field at 5 a.m. Um, because Tommy is a trained ballet dancer. And as soon as I learned that, I wanted to weave that into the story because I think that, like, I, I saw it as, like, guy in an office. Uh, but I think that as soon as you could 
blend this other very physical dance-like element to Gower um, and weave that in, into the edit of the movie, you really get into Virgil's psychology. Um, so it was it was a dream as a filmmaker, every step of it. Yeah, that's great. I, I remember seeing the scene where he's leaning into the laptop and wondering, is that real fire? They must have did the effects on that, which is fine, but I guess it wasn't. And that's incredible. Ever, do you want to speak to that scene or anything else uh, uh, about the shoot? Yeah, I mean, to piggyback what he where he was at, then I'm going to reach back to you, Thomas, with yeah. Tommy Hawkins. Big shout out to him. Once I discovered he was a dancer, I'm like, man, this man does it all. And just seeing that aspect was amazing. And just hearing Russell talk, I think that's a testament to just, I don't know, just the level of filmmaker, because to be, to, to grab information on the fly and then to apply it, and then to have the environment set where we were all as actors comfortable of leaning into something that we didn't even expect, it's just a big testament to just the groundwork that Russell set out for burnout and just the space we were in as far as the producers and the whole team. Because me and Tommy would talk on our breaks, like, bro, what are we doing? Like, oh, we're doing the unimaginable. Like, we don't know what's going on, but we know we're diving in a thousand percent. And I think that's something special. So up to date, man, it's one of my favorite sets and shoots as well. Because it's just, it's a, it's a roller coaster ride. That's um, incredible. <laughs> yeah. It just, it just, it, you can't, there's nothing to claim about. It. And I think that shows up um, on the other side of the camera as well. And I think for my part, just piggybacking on what he said, just, you know, me and Russ talked and we talked about Buster Keaton on our first meeting. Um, yep. When we, when we talked about Buster Keaton, I went home. And I think around the same time Mission Impossible was out too, or Mission Impossible was about to come back out again, um, the latest one. And it was just, I was inspired. I saw Mission Impossible and then I saw Buster Keaton. And I just went through all of that because, I mean, this is his influence, right? So I looked at it and I'm like, oh, wow. He was all in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think just a testament to the, to, the, to the filmmaker that we stand on the shoulders of. You want to do the same thing. You want to be present, you know? Uh, yeah, it was on fire, but I trusted the set. Uh, everything was good. And, you know, you're just in it. You're, you're in it for, for the sake of uh, the truth, per se. And then I'm glad we got the shot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a great shot. Um, I've got to go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, just one more question really quick. Russell, um, you, Jamie Lee Curtis is an executive producer on this project. And I know you've worked with her before, um, which is so awesome that you have that connection with, you know, with this uh, cinematic legend, really. Um, tell me about what it, it, it was like having... Um, you know, this horror legend uh, on your team, so to speak, in making this film. Jamie is wonderful in that, and she says as much, uh, she does not watch horror movies. She <laughs> she understands them, um, of course, but it's it's never her. When we started working together, there was an element of like, okay, well, you, you're a horror guy. You, you like, and you kind of know what's going on in this world. It's useful for me to know because uh, when when she watched uh, Halloween Ends, she like I think the first time they gave her like a volume dial that she could bring it all the way down for scenes that she was in, um, just be, just in case she got scared. Um, and I think that she really, um, I, I think that for burnout, she responded to the absurdity. Um, and she also responded to just like, I think the, the commitment of performance uh, in Everett and Tommy, I think that it's like, I think in short films and generally speaking, it's, it, it's a medium that tends to be, you know, you're asking papers from friends. Uh, it, it might, it might be, you know, people still kind of finding their voice in movies. Um, and it, it is like, I, I, it, it was, she was like kind of, she was amazed at the uh, at the level of everything. I, I for for lack of a of a better word, of like that we had this idea and we really just ran to the end of it. And I think that she's like she she is in many ways and well beyond myself. I think a huge proponent of like discovering uh, filmmakers and discovering art online and championing them however she can. Um, so it, it comes from a place of like, she's still kind of discovering things that she's never seen before and is really excited by them. So yeah, she's she's the greatest person ever. Shout out, shout out Jamie Lee. Uh, Very cool.
Well, that's awesome. Guys, congratulations on Burnout. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for it to have its world premiere uh, today at Dances with Films uh, and uh, and then later on at the uh, Chattanooga Film Festival. Um, and I appreciate this conversation again. I, um, thanks for taking this time and, uh, you know, good luck to you guys in your careers. Thank you, appreciate Thomas. Appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you, Thomas.